right, everybody, welcome back to AI Know Horror Radio. This is Ro here on the mic. Here with me is fabulous Miss J and Teddy over there. Hey. And Eddie. Out. Yes. <laughs> Our. How come, how come you guys get those big kind of stocky things? <laughs> <laughs> that might be special. He's got a little baby one. I know, right? He's already a contributor to the show, right? Because, you know, he's the one who came up with the idea of registering people. So yeah. look at that. Already, mm. he's part of the show. Part Thank the you. We love that. So <laughs> to be a part of something. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Eddie, I know that you teach classes here. Mm -hmm. So you're a film teacher, correct? I am, yeah. I teach directing, mm -hmm. which is... Um, teaching directors how to work with uh, actors and bring out the character and do rehearsals and casting and stuff like that. And then I teach uh, narrative short form, which is the technical side of that, mm -hmm. where to put the camera and why. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's kind of reduced it down to <laughs> one sentence. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's another class that I teach here that I really like, which is called uh, audio and video for the web. Oh, And that's cool. outside of the film program, but that's for... Um, For web designers. Yeah, like me. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, <laughs> like I mean, me. You know, video is taking such a role in, in websites now that I, I really want to teach, um, you know, web designers how to tell a story. That's cool. So there's there are two particular um, assignments I give in that. Is one is a how-to video, mm -hmm. like how to do something, like make a milkshake or whatever. And that's kind of how to tell a story because if you leave out a a step in that process mm -hmm. you're not going to have the milkshake at the end mm -hmm. so it's literally like this happens this happens this happens and then i assign at the end it's a personal three to four minute documentary about someone who inspires you mm -hmm. and there's been people in the class that have never looked through a camera before and by the end of that class they come up with some really inspiring stuff wow it's been really i want to do that yeah. it was actually uh, <laughs> mitch Your, your yeah, teacher. I love him. Yeah, one of the students made a, a film about him that's really Oh, Sasu. Amazing. He's my friend. It's really, yeah, it's, uh, I'll show it to you. It's really inspiring. Yeah, I remember. Sasu Guo. Yeah, yeah he's my yeah, friend. Yeah, exactly. He's my friend, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's really cool. And then uh, I know that you've collaborated in really cool uh, projects like mm -hmm. Boardwalk Empire, yes. the TV show. So I was reading that you were a consultant, research advisor, and researcher, depending on the episode. So yeah. um, how does that, and obviously we want to know everything you know about what you did on the show but I'm thinking for you as a teacher how does that influence you when you're you know kind of like talking to the students and saying you have to do your research you know you need your facts when yeah. you're telling a story so in what way does that influence you to make the stories objective and truthful? yeah I mean let's I guess we'll roll it back a little bit um Should I tell my whole story leading up to that? Please, yeah. I, it'll be quick. Um, yeah. Basically, <laughs> We want to know everything, please. I, I basically, like, I came out of college, and I, I literally started that day I was I was finished school for a uh, sports production company. Oh. So I was actually, like, producing big sporting events, and um, that moved me into music production. So I was actually touring with a show called Lollapalooza. Mm -hmm. Oh, I heard that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it, <laughs> it's a big, it's a one-off now in yeah, Chicago. Yeah, I heard. But you used I know to it. tour around the U.S. and Canada for the entire summer. So I've been out with you know bands like the Beastie Boys and um, Metallica and um, hundreds of bands. But I was the stage manager, mm -hmm. so I would run. I was I was the stage manager on the second stage, and I would run that stage like it was a nightclub, and you know wow. put a band on. And then I would get up on the stage and kind of keep the audience there and, you know, joke with them and insult them and everything and keep the audience there until the next band came on. Um, but then while the bands were on the stage, I would start taking photos of the bands and then eventually videos of the bands. Wow. And then I started directing music videos from there. So it was oh, just wow. like I had always taken an opportunity I had, do something extra to lead to the next thing. So that's what I, that's a, a, coming back to Boardwalk Empire. Um, that's how I eventually got this job was I was in film school in New York and um, the uh, I, I had a short film that, that got a lot of attention mm -hmm. um, got, it was, it was uh, nominated for the Student Academy Award wow. on a number of um, film festivals and that brought me out here to Los Angeles um, to meet with agents and managers a week before the writer's strike so oh, everything wow. skidded to a halt <laughs> um, I was working as a, an assistant uh, to a photographer, mm -hmm. and then I got this call from uh, a, the 
the student who had um, produced my short film, and he said he was talking to one of the writers from The Sopranos. Wow. And that he was putting together a project that took place in Atlantic City, where I was born and grew up. Oh, wow. And so he's like, oh, you got to talk to my friend Eddie. He grew up in Atlantic City. All of the screenplays he writes take place in Atlantic City and everything. He's like, oh, I want to meet this guy, right? So I had uh, breakfast with him, and I took that opportunity to put together literally two bags full of uh, books and photos about Atlantic City, and then I had these photos of my grandfather oh who my worked God, in awesome. the Ritz Hotel where the show took place. So I sat down uh, at a diner with him, and I showed him all this stuff, and he's like, you're hired, like, right on the spot. Just wow. because it was just like, it was one of those things so where it was like cool. the perfect job for the perfect person yeah. because I, where I'd grown up and that kind of thing. Um, he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do with you, but you're hired. And then I was, from there, I was in the, the writer's room for the next three years, literally just sitting wow. there at a table like this, and they're pitching ideas around, and you know, whenever they had a question, I would answer that question based on my knowledge or a story that I had from my father or my grandfather from Atlantic wow. City. Or I would you know, just quickly look it up on the computer. And then after I would leave that, you know, after a 12 hour day there, I would go and I would sit with the directors as they were directing the show and just watch what they did. And then also I had an acting background, so they cast me on the show as well. <laughs> uh, I, was Do it all. Yeah, I was an actor for three seasons um, as well. But the point of this whole thing is I was able to say, okay, I, and, and I believe this, that, that in this industry, Everybody says, oh, you know, it's who you know, but it's, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. <laughs> and that's about the work. Mm -hmm. And I was able to take essentially three generations of my family growing up in Atlantic City mm -hmm. and turn it into something unique and Valuable. turn it into a paying position because it was like, I made myself unique. Like, I, mm -hmm. you have to figure out, like, who you are on the shelf. It's like, okay, I'm the Atlantic City guy who can also write and also direct and that kind of thing. But that was going to be the thing that was going to set me apart and get me into that room. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just when I said when I said earlier that, you know, in that class, I, w I want everybody to tell their story or, you know, talk about someone who inspires them. Think about what sets you apart, because that is the thing that's going to move you forward. So, wow, I love it. Long yeah. story short. So knowing your <laughs> value in other ways, like sometimes things about yourself that you didn't even know, right? That that will matter. <laughs> Jay is saying, hell yeah, over there on the back. <laughs> he agrees. Uh, but yeah, I think it's it's knowing, recognizing your story and the things you've been through and kind of like seeing how you could be of value, right, for a project like this. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, my God, what an inspiring story. Um, so, okay, so then, you know, with all this knowledge, now that you have students, you know, here mm -hmm. and you teach them how to do that, like, how do you bring out that element of, you know, be objective, do your research, you know, when you're going to start a new project? Like, how does that come into play? Well, you know, again, back to everybody has a story. So mm -hmm. I, I tell them to sit down with the person that they're going to interview for this this documentary and just talk to them. And that's research. Talking to someone is research, you know, just finding out what their story is. And then as you're, you know, doing that research, you're going to find something that really sticks out for you. Um, and, you know, for me, when I run up against something, when I'm writing or something like that, and I just kind of hit a wall, I always go back to the research because mm -hmm. you're going to find something that's like, no way. <laughs> and then that's like going to that. be the thing that kind of cracks it open for you, you know, and mm -hmm. it's just like, I don't know, it's, it's sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's tedious. But, you know, when, even the, we were talking about music earlier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I, when I get to a place to where I feel like music is kind of getting stale or I'm not into what's, like, going on in music, I'll go back to the roots of oh, where yes. that came from. And I find some stuff that's just, like, so inspiring. And I Love really it. get into, like, some new stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that answers your question, but... 
Yeah. No, yeah, it definitely does. And I think it's important because we all get this like blocks, right? Where mm -hmm. you don't know where to go. That is block. Yeah. And I think looking back and it, and it's everywhere. It's not only writing or music, you know, for me as a graphic designer, uh, and I've said this before, I love art history. Yeah. I've studied art history like extensively and repetitively like over and over and over again because there's just so many works yeah. and i think it's it's always that value on like going back and seeing how all these artists treated the you know the issues that i'm facing right now like what is the solution that they came up with to portray you know angles and depth and all these things and looking at that can inspire you to produce new work yeah. so i think it applies to all majors like regardless yeah. of mm -hmm. frankly, what you're doing it's all research The, mm -hmm. the key is keeping an open mind. So you could be walking down the street downtown and you see a, a sign or something up on, on the building and you're like, oh my God, that inspires mm -hmm. something that you're, you know, you're going to do in your graphic arts or something like that. Or mm -hmm. for me, it may be you know, a kid running across the street with a dog or something like that. And mm -hmm. that's like, oh, I want to write a story about that. Or, you know? So it's just like keeping that open mind so that you are um, creatively fertile Mm -hmm. to let that happen so yeah it's all research mm -hmm. you know every day you're on this planet is research yeah that's true yeah. and and speaking of writing uh, actually we have a new major now it's called creative writing for the arts or something like that it, it's mm. new it just came out and it's focused entirely in writing um For the people who might be taking your classes, I, I mean, I don't know how that goes, but I'm, maybe some people are or think they're not that good writers or, you know, it can be, uh, uh, I guess, frightening or, you know, I don't know, difficult to deal with when you first see it. Yeah. Um, how do you kind of like ease them into this write, writing process? How do you like take the fear away? Um, I just try to deconstruct it as best I can and make it turn it put it into like little bits mm -hmm. like I won't tell someone okay come back next week with a script of your final project that you're going to shoot eight weeks from now you know I'll be like okay come back next week with two or three sentences mm. about something you want to do and then from there I'll show them how to do an outline which is now it's not just two or three sentences it's like 12 sentences okay this happens then this happens then this happens then this happens and then from there essentially once you have the outline then you have kind of what the project is and the mm -hmm. structure of it. And from there, you just flesh it out. You take each one of those lines like, okay, a uh, boy and a dog uh, ran across the road, and then I'll flesh it out. I'll put in, you know, okay, what happened there? Did, did, did uh, they get hit by a car? Did, you know, was he running away from his, his parents or whatever? Flesh it out, add the dialogue, and then you have a scene. And then, you know, I just, just little steps along the way And then each step is not the finished thing. It's mm -hmm. not, you don't have to be perfect the first or the 12th time. I was going to say that, yeah. like, that sounds like really good advice for a writer's block. Because yeah. at times, like, I'll get inspired and it's like, oh, I want to write. And then I sit down like, okay, what am I going to write about? And it's yeah. like, <laughs> I'm expecting, you know, something like a finished pro project or yeah. whatever, or something perfect. And it's like, then I get discouraged and it's like, yeah. okay, I'm going to come back to this. Yeah, and look, I got hobbled by that for years because it's like we have all those finished products. Mm. When we watch movies, that's a finished project that, that took th three years. That's true. Right? But they don't show like all of the the, the drafts with the screenplay. I think it, I think it, uh, I, when you were talking about art history, uh, I went to a, a museum in New York, and they had a whole room of uh, studies for a painter. And it was, it was literally like 50 paintings that eventually got to the end painting. Mm -hmm. And I never knew that. I thought they painted it once on a canvas and it was done. But it's like that process of being willing to fail. Mm -hmm. Try it, okay? Show it to some friends that you trust or a teacher or something like that. They'll give you notes. You fix it. You fix it a little more. You fix it a little more. I mean, you know, that's what it is. Like I said, it's not about doing your best work. It's about learning how to do your best work. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important is just, just do it. Because if, if it stays in your head, mm -hmm. then you can't move on to the next creative thing that's gonna there's only so much room in your head so if you write it you're literally getting it out of your head mm -hmm. and then some more creative oh, cool. stuff can come in there yeah i mean there's there's this process that's called uh the artist's way 
and that process is every morning you wake up and you, you just handwrite three pages of just getting stuff out of your brain wow. and then it just opens your brain up for you know creativity and then like after that. you do that once a week you go to like the movies or you go to a museum or something like that and then you put more creative stuff back in there so I don't know it's all about inspiration and, and doing the work Hey, we gotta try it sometime. I know, I'm gonna do it too all this week. Hey Teddy, what are you doing? <laughs> My weekly piece. But and yeah, you're talking about inspiration and you're also we were mentioning this audio and video class where you make students find someone who inspires them. So how important is it really to have a mentor? You know, what is the role of that person who can take you to the next level or you know, maybe someone's a student, they don't have anyone to talk to. So what would you tell them? You know, what why is it important to have this person that can help you out a little bit yeah, I mean, that's a that's an interesting question because it's not like you're just gonna find a mentor and that's yeah. gonna be you know it's, it's it's gonna have to click it's gonna have to be the right person and it's not like you can just say that's gonna be my mentor and <laughs> it's gonna work out um you know because then it would be me and scorsese going to lunch every every day <laughs> and that's cool. but it's just like that um the relationship kind of develops over time. Um, but I think the, the most important first step is to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you have a question, just ask somebody. It may be a classmate, it may be a teacher or whatever, but it's just like, it's the only way you're going to get the answer, mm -hmm. you know? And the answer is out there. Somebody knows it. Mm -hmm. Somebody's been there before. So, you know, that's really the first step is just being willing to ask questions. Yeah, and I know like lots of students in class that would n not ask questions because they'll be, I don't know why, they'll be afraid. But um, I know in my like um, recording class, I would always ask questions and then people would be like, oh, okay, like, you know, I'm not going to ask any questions because I'm pretty sure he's going to ask it, but sometimes I don't. And then they get held back. And then once they're put on the spot to actually do it, they're like, I don't know. <laughs> this. Can you show me? <laughs> yeah. So I, mean, I, I don't know if it's because they're shy or I really don't know why they don't ask questions. Like if you don't know what to do, you know yeah. what I mean? I mean, look, I, I still do it every day, you know. If, mm -hmm. if I, and and even like if I don't know something, I'll part of asking a question is Google it. You know, mm -hmm. that's part of yeah. it. Always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have so much access now to R two D two. All this information that's really available. Uh, to us yeah. so uh, I mean I think that's that's really cool it's really good advice and now obviously we want to know about the show you know mm -hmm. it's very exciting and I was telling you my parents are fans of the show yeah. <laughs> and I was watching a few episodes and I found it very interesting you know and I think we were talking about this briefly uh, briefly before the show but I think a lot of the things you see on TV are opportunities for you to reflect on what's going on right now you know and there's this idea there's this concept of like you know, a public figure and sort of like representing himself in a certain way, but then there's like, you know, dirty work happening and it's like other people have to handle this and he just presents himself with a different image. Yeah. So I was saying like, do you think this reflects kind of what we're seeing now in political debates in a way, you know, like we see something, is that really true to what's going on or what's your take on this? Like, yeah, I mean, I'll walk you through the process of how the show gets made and then you'll mm -hmm. see that that's exactly what it is yeah um you know i mean it's it's not like the show was written in 1920 you know it's mm -hmm. about l okay let me explain what the show is uh, about. yeah so the uh, boardwalk empire is about um nucky thompson uh, yeah who was based on a real political figure uh in atlantic city he wasn't the mayor but he was the guy behind the mayor so he was the political operative and it was just at the point in history where prohibition uh took place which was the, of they, alcohol. they mm -hmm. outlawed alcohol mm -hmm. um so uh the the real nucky and in the show that the, the uh, character had this opportunity in that atlantic city is an island in New Jersey that literally has like seven miles of beach. So they would bring in alcohol from, you know, foreign countries and just land it there on the beach. And then he would put it in trucks and, and send it to New York or Philadelphia or whatever. So he was not only a politician, but he got in, in line with gangsters and, was, mm -hmm. you know, doing illegal uh, pro uh, alcohol distribution. So that's kind of the setup of the whole thing. Um, 
So obviously it wasn't written in 1920. 1920s, but it's about stuff the... that happened in 1920. But, it, but the writer's room is a bunch of people like us sitting around a table and just talking about, you know, our everyday lives. Yeah. Uh, political things that are happening in the newspaper. We'll read articles from the newspaper. Um, just kind of throwing these ideas around and then that starting so cool. to formulate it into these characters. Like how, uh, if this character was faced with this political question of doing the right thing or doing the best thing for his family, what would he do? And then, you know, from there, there's there's boards all the way around the room, these white oh, wow. boards. And we'll start just putting up, oh, that's a great idea. That that idea, that thing that we, we read in the New York Times today, let's put that up on the board. So we put it up like wow. whatever. And then we start taking those ideas and we'll take, okay, the main character is Nucky. So what's going to be his arc? He does this, he does this, this, this. By the end of the, the season, he's here. So we'll start listing out what those, they're called beats. So it's story beats. Um, and then we'll actually start at one point blocking out each one of the boards as episode one, two, three, four, five. So that there's 12 all the way around. And we're like, okay, he starts here and he wants to have a family, but at this point, he he makes a backdoor deal that's going to jeopardize that. So, okay, that's going to happen in uh, episode six. And then from there, we'll do that with each one of the characters and then list out in each episode what's going to happen in each episode. Um, and then the, the writer's assistant types that up and we'll lay it out in a certain order Mm-hmm. And then the the writers will talk about, okay, so this is Nucky's story, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beats. This is Margaret, who's the female lead, one, two, three, four, five, six beats. Um, and then the next character is one, two, three, four, five. And then they'll literally take pieces of paper like this and cut it into strips. And then they'll they'll move they'll move the stuff around and make the story kind of fit into a shape of what the episode's gonna be. And then they literally, again, they tape that back together, and then the writer's assistant goes away and types that up as if it's an outline, which I talked about earlier. So mm-hmm. it's just literally like, scene one, this happens. Scene two, this happens. And then they take that um, outline, and they'll send one of the writers off to write for two weeks mm-hmm. and write out the whole script. And then that script com- comes back, and then it goes to who's called the showrunner, who is the creator of the show. And he goes back and he he does a rewrite in a style of what the show kind of is mm-hmm. to make it all kind of fit together. And then um, the then that's the shooting script, and they send it off, and they they send it off with the director, and then they shoot the episode, and then the whole process starts all over again. But it's all wow. happening. That's amazing. While what we're seeing politically in the day to day world is actually happening, and that mm-hmm. filters into the show. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is really, when you think about art, that's the key to art, is mm-hmm. you're not taking a subject and forcing it in someone's mm-hmm. face. You're getting to them through their emotions. You know, uh, I always think comedy is the best form of politics yeah. because you're making someone laugh about something that they didn't think about and how ridiculous it is and when they yes. laugh about it it's like wait a minute that's ridiculous you know but you're getting to a different thing you're not going right for their brain you're going for their heart or you know their sense of humor you know same thing with music anything if there's if there's another way you can get in that's that's what art is really to deliver your message in yeah. a different way yeah that's that's awesome i think i mean it's interesting to know like the backstory of it because yeah. i just have the experience that it is for me when i watch the show which means it was successful because yeah. I was able to think on today's politics. You know, it, yeah. it made me sort of think about that. And I was also telling you, uh, there's this comment that he makes. He's telling a story to a group of women in a church, I believe it is, mm-hmm. or something that looks like a church. And then he's talking about a story that he went through, like very heartening story when he was a kid. And he says, oh, and then I had to kill three rats, you know, to feed my family. And everyone like gasps mm-hmm. at the fact that he killed three rats. But to me, that's sort of like, you know, a sarcastic comment and saying how society nowadays, it's such a scandal. Like, it, yeah. they're so, well, you know, 
so much scandal well, on walks, little things, you know? The, the next scene in that is he actually walks out of the room. Yes. And his driver to the is guy. out there. And he's like, three rats. And he's like, what? You, what? And, and he's like, never let the truth get in the way Ruin of the good the story. story. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but you know that that tells you how ridiculous things are. We see that nowadays. People getting like super like scared and kind of like, oh my God, so scandalous about things that you're like, Really? You care about that when there are people who are like, I don't know, 13 years old and are suffering depression or there's yeah. like discrimination and there's like all these other things going in. But these little things make people well, gasp, yeah, you know, I mean, so it's like I don't want to get too deeply into this, but um, I was with a friend last night who writes. He was uh, he wrote for the WWE for the rest wrestling. Oh. And um, a journalist called him the other day and, and asked him about the current um political race um, because there was some connection to wrestling or something like that and he said he's like this it's a wrestling match he's like you know you have a villain who's kind of you know walking <laughs> around like if you watch a wrestling match there's you know the, the villain that's just kind of like nothing nothing can stick to him mm -hmm. and then there's you know the, the good guy so it's just like you know no matter what side the audience is on they see good and evil Mm -hmm. And that's any story that you write or hear or anything. It's the basics of good and evil. Mm -hmm. And when you have that, then you have a real story. And everybody's really excited to watch. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And then also, um, I was looking at some of your work. And I see that you also do photography, as you were mm -hmm. saying before. And something that really stood out to me in your body of work when it comes to photography is that you're like really good at capturing these like raw emotions mm -hmm. like throughout your photographs like that's what I saw like very raw very real images not really like you know oh this is so beautiful this is so like put together so sad but it's really like raw vibes that you can see through your photography and I think that's very admirable wow. you know as an artist to be able to reflect that so uh, what do you think or what would you say to like again students or any of us like how important is it to be like genuine you know and show, show yourself as you are rather than trying to like polish your work you know yeah. if it's audio if it's graphic oh you know let me make this flawless yeah. versus like this is raw and this is just me yeah so well, you know let me, let me say two things first mm -hmm. you have to, you know you have to learn the rules first before you can break them mm -hmm. so you have to learn the form so that you can use it to your advantage And then also what I said earlier was, what was the thing that made me stand out, that was unique about yeah. just me that got attention? And I think that's where authenticity comes in. It's like, mm. what's unique about you? What, what, what is the thing that only you can do in the world with these tools? Because that's all you're learning here is tools, tools and language, essentially. Mm -hmm. Now you have to take it out and make it your own. Um, so does that answer the question? Yeah, no, okay. yeah, it definitely does. Like being authentic. And I guess, um, as I was saying, I thought it would be a good question for you because of what I saw in your photography. So I really, oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, that's, I've never heard that before. And thank you. So much. <laughs> that's a huge, huge compliment. But also again, it's not that I just chose to have emotion in a photo and took that photo. And that was the one. I took hundreds of photos. Mm -hmm. So it was like I was taking photos all over the place. You know, I was I was out with uh, rock bands. I, I took photos of uh, Lucha Libre wrestling matches <laughs> and that type of thing. And I was just taking thousands of photos. Mm -hmm. And then that comes in in the editing process. Which ones stick out to me? Mm -hmm. That's probably where that voice thing comes in. It's like, okay, that makes this sense. one is more interesting to me than that one. So it's the choosing of the process. But it's just like literally you have to take those thousand photos or you have to write those hundred pages and then edit it down to figure out what's the most essential to you. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's, that's the artistry is that filter. Mm -hmm. your filter of what's important yeah and i think we all go through that right like me as a graphic designer you guys in audio we have different options right and then you have to pick and you're like mm -hmm. okay what work best reflects what i'm looking for and i think we all have experienced that right having options and then yeah. kind of having to make decisions based on our guts or when we think it's best right and your taste is invaluable because no one else has it mm -hmm. know, so
<laughs> yeah, making those decisions, which can be hard sometimes. <laughs> I mean, that happens to me. It's like I don't know which one, and then you're like, you have to pick. You know, you have to make a decision. Yeah, yeah. And let me let me talk about you know you guys being in school. Here. Mm -hmm. There's there's two things I want to talk about. One is, okay, you have all these these examples of great work that you're looking at and you're, you're trying to strive for that great work but you haven't developed the muscles or the tools to get what's in your head to be as great as that great work that you're looking so you just got to do the best work you can and keep doing it to get there so there's 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 that part of it and um the I lost my train of thought. <laughs> you forgot the other one. Come back. To now I want to hear. <laughs> I'm like, what is it? I want to know. <laughs> um, God, that's terrible. This is I'm. It's you know, I'm as old as Bob Dylan. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's It'll funny. Come to me, forget. Yeah, I really wanted to hear I it. Know, right? Your advice <laughs> is great. What's the rest? <laughs> yeah, I really like um, what you've been saying, but. Uh, I mean, hopefully it'll come to you, and yeah. then we can hear that out. Everybody but stop talking. <laughs> yeah, everyone <laughs> stop okay, okay. for five minutes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's I don't know. It's been really cool having you here. Thank Honestly, you. I mm -hmm. feel so inspired. Like mm -hmm. everything you've said, it's like it's so professional. And I feel like when you were talking to us about how the show was made, uh, in my brain, like I was there. <laughs> you know, I was just like picturing. I was picturing every, the whole thing. Yeah, right? I was picturing the whole thing happening, and it was yeah. like really exciting for me. I was like seeing myself in that room and seeing all of you create. It was really and fun. put this together. I mean, let me let me say one last thing on that. Was I was I was in a really unique position in that. I was researching the show. I was in the writers' room. I yes. was working with the directors. I was an actor on the show, so I would I would find in the research I would find a really interesting uh, story. I would pitch it to the writers. You know this this story. This really happened or whatever. And they would be, oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. So they would write uh, the script. I, I would read the script over, make sh make sure it was all, you know, uh, authentic. Mm -hmm. And then eventually they would go and shoot it. And two weeks later, I would be in a costume as my character <laughs> standing on a set in oh my god of something that I read in a book two weeks earlier. Wow. And it was really magic. You it's know what I noticed, awesome. though, throughout everything that you said? Like, mm -hmm. it kind of seems like you always just followed your intuition. Like, you never really questioned it. Yeah. And then you followed it, and it led you somewhere else, like, the next You're step. You're actually giving me chills right now, because that's something... <laughs> That's something that I'm really setting forth in my life right now to yeah. do. It's just being that. like, no matter what happens, it's going to be okay. So being open to wherever that takes me. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I'm, it's great that you pointed that out because I think I'm conscious of it now. And it makes, it really makes, uh, it means a lot that you said yeah. that. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's really amazing. Um, thank you so much. I, you. I really appreciate Ooh, you. This was so cool. I'm like, I want to be a filmmaker now. <laughs> I love that I'm the season opener. Yeah, not, hey, not yeah, I'm going to yeah, switch yeah. majors to filmmaking. <laughs> I can do what you do. No, that's really cool. And it was um, an honor to be uh, working with the president of the school. <laughs> hey. Hey. Oh my that's an inside, oh, inside that's joke. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every week he kept asking me if I was still the president of the show. Uh. <laughs> I was like, yes, so far. Yeah, <laughs> Nobody has told me otherwise. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm still the president. But, yeah, um, before we go, and obviously, if you remember the other thing yeah, that you were going to tell us for students at any <laughs> time, please, be, we'll, please we'll, let us know. I'll write it up for the blog. Right, yeah. yeah. But uh, before we go, um, Jay came up with a really cool section. Uh, last, It was last show, right? The last show last yeah, season? last yeah. season. So she came up with this concept of, like, talking about something positive. And mm -hmm. so she had a little story about something that happened to her and it turned out into sort of like a learning experience yeah. and I like this section so much that I asked her if we could keep it permanent because I'm all about you know things that are positive and optimistic and could kind of remind you of good things yeah. so we thought about making it a permanent section and just kind of making it like something good that happened this week so something that you're thankful for or that made you happy uh and yeah we would like to end the show you know each one of us just saying something because i was talking to jay even before the show today and i was like i love this section because even if you're having a horrible week It forces you to think about yeah. something, yeah. you know, you think everything's awful, but then it forces you to think about something. And even if 
us four reflect on something and that makes our days better, great. If somebody that's listening or watching the show can think of something, that's already great. So yeah. anything that means having a positive impact, yeah, I'm all I'm, for. With, with a number of friends, a number of friends of us have an email list that's a gratitude list. So oh, every cool. day it's like coming up with five things that you're, you're yeah. grateful for. That yeah, and it, and it forces you, you know, yeah. and it can be small things. It can be big things. It doesn't matter. It can even be something like, oh, you know, I'm thankful for my puppy or it made me happy that they played my song. So anything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's going to be our new thing. So, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. So you want to start, Teddy? Me? Yeah. So basically oh. tell us <laughs> something that happened this week that either made you happy, made you smile, that you're thankful for. Again, it can be really something super small. It could even be like, oh, I walked in and this person smiled at me. Like, it could be anything. So... Go. Me, um, just every day seeing uh, all my friends at school and just hanging out, having a great time it keeps my mind off of like the uh, the bad, not really the bad things. Okay, that's a better way to say it. Um, the I, like the things that I don't really want to think about because mm -hmm. um, like now um, m when we hang out, just everything on my mind is like okay, all the problems are gone. Let's just have a great time and just you know be happy. So just. I'm thankful for like all the friends that I have that are here right now, just hey. hanging out and doing doing this, you know, <laughs> just being happy. So I'm just thankful for all the friends that I have. And, I love it. Yeah. Are we part of your friends? Of course. <laughs> are we part of those of people? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jay, go. Okay, so I'm kind of gonna flip it a little bit. It's a little bit. It's it's positive, but how it started kind of wasn't positive. Mm -hmm. Uh, just recently, about two days ago, I got some news from my neighbor, and uh, she told me that her grandbaby passed. Mm. And um, I knew her son, the the guy who had the baby, the sweetest dude. Like he's literally always in a good mood. And at first, well, I still feel I still I feel terrible that it happened, but it kind of made me reflect, mm -hmm. and it's like. Often, like, we we kind of, like, take each other for granted. Yeah. And not really realize, like, you can be here one day. Yeah. And be gone the next day. I totally agree. And so, just after I found that out, like, I just wanted to spread love any way I can. Like, mm -hmm. any way to put a smile on somebody's face, make somebody feel, you know, good. Or mm -hmm. just telling you I love you, showing you I love you, like... Because you, you just never know, you know? Yeah. Especially with your family, too. Like, I'm very close to my family. and I, would, I wouldn't even know what I would do if something was to happen to them. So, I just, I take that and I say, go home today. Tell your mom you love her. <laughs> <laughs> tell your brothers, your sisters, whoever. Or just, you know, you're walking down the street. You see a stranger. Just smile at them. Like, you know. Yeah. It's free, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smiles are free. Yeah, I'm sorry. It. I didn't mean to put that I love it. bad news. Yeah, no, it's not. One. It's yeah. not. I think it's great. You know, that's valuable too. Like yeah. something that is like a hard thing, but it made you reflect on something. So anything mm -hmm. is valid. It could be that. Mm -hmm. It could be even something that ruined your day, and then the next day something happened and it changed it around. So that's perfect. Right. I, I love it, and I really like what you said. Actually, what I'm gonna say, I think in a way relates to what you're saying because it's about love and you talked about love mm -hmm. but it's just this thing like I was thinking today when I was driving here and I was thinking about your section and I was like I want to talk about like how grateful I am for what love can make us do as people I think it's, it's something so small that we overlook but really love has the power to make you do the unthinkable like there are so many possibilities that open up when love is at play you know all of a sudden you're like a superhero like you're willing to do anything for that person that you love you know there are things that you thought you were not capable of but when it comes to love and you have that experience and you have that feeling everything changes mm. it's just like the world looks different you know I don't know I just think love is such an amazing emotion and it's such a strong force And I think the fact that we as human beings can experience all these possibilities that, uh, you know, are born from love, I think is amazing. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Yeah, hey. it's the best way to battle fear. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I don't know. Love is in the air. <laughs> yeah. um, I honestly 
truly this week this has been the highlight of my week and oh. thank you so hey. much I'm, I'm so <laughs> i'm so grateful and happy that you guys asked me to do this so many weeks or months ago and it's finally here and i know i love you guys yay there, I, said it. I said it you told me to say it so i said it. <laughs> yeah i i love it i've said i i love you before <laughs> not to you but i've said it to carlos oh, i love <laughs> you carlos to Dave. So, you know. <laughs> i've said it to other people i'm like oh my god he's such a kind person so yeah thank you so much for coming oh, absolutely this was mm-hmm. amazing yeah. let's do a part two when i remember that thing. yes <laughs> yeah. come back to us let us know what it was because we really want to know mm-hmm. uh but yeah guys that was all for today um teddy you want to tell us about social media social media today? yes so, hi, hi, how you doing? Hey. Oh, we see somebody on the window. That's <laughs> Justin over there. Okay. I'm Justin. <laughs> okay, so tell us about our social media. So, yeah, make sure to follow us on a... Uh, man, it's been a while. It's been like... <laughs> I was about to say... YouTube, Instagram. Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook <laughs> at AI NoHo Radio. And make sure to tune in next week for our next interview. And we're going to have Teddy Talks, sports, and more Yay. sections. Our political Stay debate. And, and political and debate. Please. And we're going to be wearing uh, costumes in a few weeks. October the show. So, yeah. I'm excited yeah. what everyone's got to wear. I know. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm to excited too. Jay? Oh, I just wanted to say next uh, show we will be having an, a performance. Oh yes, yes, with about, Talk about that. people from the club. Uh, we still haven't came up with a name for the band yet, <laughs> so give us a second. But it's gonna be uh, Jay's behind Jay's the door be right now, waving at us. Now. He's part Justin of the band. On the guitar, <laughs> Nicole's gonna be singing. I'm gonna be playing the keys. Oh, nice. hey. it shall be fun. Let's call yes. it the lo- we'll call it the Love Club. <laughs> the love, the love club. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited the about the club. band. I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. yeah, Jay's over there saying he's gonna be late. <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited for the band. I can't wait, um, you know, to hear the performance. So all right, guys, that's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in, and come back next week. We're gonna have a fun show. Yay! All Thanks. right, see you soon. Thank you. Thanks.